All right, red square, red jacket. Indeed, the Soviet government hasn't realized in the beginning how dangerous the Beatles were. Something was happening that they wanted to control, and they didn't know how to do it. In the words of Russia's President Vladimir Putin, back then, McCartney's music was seen as alien propaganda. East meets West today when the pop star Paul McCartney takes part in a revolutionary radio broadcast. The former Beatle will be taking telephone calls live from the Soviet Union. Paul McCartney, I don't know if music and politics have got much in common. I think it is, in fact, one of the untold stories of the collapse of the Soviet regime. And Paul McCartney and the Beatles were at the forefront of that. The Beatles was a phenomenon, and it was a phenomenon of freedom. We're coming with Paul McCartney to confirm you're all ready for us. We are ready to rock Russia. It was a historic moment for Paul McCartney. A remarkable appearance tonight by one of the most famous rock stars Tens in the world. Tens of thousands of Russians cheering on former Beatle Paul McCartney. <laughs> after conquering America. So long in coming. Both the USSR. And thousands were there to greet it. I listen to the Beatles at BBC Radio, that super group. God bless you. We love you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The idea was being actually banned and being a bad influence on the, the youth. We knew to be untrue. That, of course, was very widely spread unofficially in the Soviet Union. The authorities didn't prevent young people from hearing the music, but it was never officially sponsored or liked even by the authorities, but that was a long time ago. We're back with more of Paul McCartney in Red Square. And then, of course, you know, suddenly start doing the lines about Ukraine girls and, and Moscow girls. And I think, of course, it's going to go down well here. <laughs> 